Hello everyone, in this week's episode we're going to be discussing light from here in Romania in a lost church. It's fantastic, there's an organ at one end, lovely altar at the other. But I've walked in, I was setting up, and just as I was doing so, there was this amazing light ray, this display of light entered the scene. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on photographing this style of photography, which to be honest with you, can give any of your images wow factor. First day it's been sunny in 10 days here and I've got to work really quickly to get some shots of this really fast and that is what I'm going to do. I'm using my lines, I'm trying to work quickly because the thing is with this kind of light and you don't always get very long, it literally wasn't even set up, I wasn't ready to go. I'm still struggling a little bit to kind of line things up. Now, my position is not far enough forward, so let's move further forward as well. I grabbed some compositions, but now I can see the light's gonna hang around. I'm gonna move further forwards and get some more shots. So it's looking beautiful in my composition. I'm working fast. One of the things about lighting like this is you never know when it's gonna arrive and you certainly never know when it's going to disappear, so I've got to work pretty quickly. Now the organ at one end is, is truly magic. It's a beauty, you can see it was covered up at one point. Some bits have started to be stolen and have gone missing. But it's brilliant up there. Now my exposure settings, it's a battle we've got going on here between shutter speed and ISO. Now I, I need to capture that light and I want it still in the frame. My middle exposure has to be perfect. And I think it is, that's not an issue. What that's then given me is half a second. That's the maximum I can allow in this position, to be honest, because any longer than that, and the light moves, the rays move, and of course that means that it doesn't look quite as good. It looks like a kind of long exposure of the light, and you don't want that. 0 0.4 of a second, ISO 400, 7.1. Exposure is basically perfect. Now the light's looking pretty good. Basically, what I just did there is I just tried to close the door a tiny bit, a fraction, close those light gaps a little bit, and it's given me much more acute beams. They look a little bit better. It looks fantastic at the top there now. I'm gonna roll the lens to the top. So I've got a pano to work with. It's gonna make a square shot, the final result, by just including the top in it. The key here to good shots is just to keep shooting over and over and repeat yourself almost quite a bit. And when you think you've got it, you haven't. So shoot the light and constantly shoot the light. You can see I've got five brackets going off now. And that's important because 
it gives me the choice, like I said later. Have you ever watched your Netflix productions or movies and studied what they do with the lighting? Say, for example, they're photographing in a heritage mansion or a relic or ruin or an alleyway even, an old part of the city, an old town. It could be anywhere like that. Think of Peaky Blinders, The Crown. Watch what they do with the lighting to make it cinematic. What they tend to do is have a spotlight outside said mansion or the actual shot or the frame of their, uh, you know, their image. And what they try to do is they try to blast the light in and then they get the camera to see that light with smoke, with dust, with pellets, with machines, that kind of thing. Usually a machine in kind of larger productions, but it can be the small pellets or flares depending on the environment. What you're looking at here is basically that setup, a kind of cinematic vibe. It gives the viewer cinematic feel. And if you can incorporate that into your photography, whenever you can do so, you should definitely try to do it because ultimately it's gonna to lead to much better results and a bit of wow factor in your images. Are they easy to capture? No, of course not. Like I said, you're there, I'm panicking, I'm running around, I'm looking at it. Your settings have got to be locked in and you've got to react fast. But when you do react fast and you do get some decent results, they look something like this. recorded a video like this over in Italy a couple of years ago but I messed up the sound and today I've made sure that I haven't done that well at least I hope not I'll put some of that footage into this video a little bit later on but for now here's some of my best photos I've taken of light rays entering locations over the last 10 years Lighting is fundamental to film and of course to photography because it creates a visual mood and an atmosphere and a sense of meaning for the audience. Every step of the cinematic process affects the lighting setup and vice versa. Lighting tells the audience where to look, especially in photography. And although there are others, the three main types of lighting are key lighting, fill light and backlighting, which is really the element we're looking at here. Backlighting is placed behind, say, an actor to help define the features and distinguish them from the background. Of course, it doesn't need to be a high-end production. The trick is used by all kinds of programs and films. Here you can see two examples of the trick being used during the Netflix show Sex Education. I pull the same ideas into my photography and it can benefit some scenes and it's something to keep in mind and keep in my toolkit. Used selectively, it works a treat. So I have a few examples. Here's Crestfallen, a piano in the middle of the room. It's backlit, it's got cinematic lighting falling in behind the piano. This is walking into the light and here we've got another one that's done well in print sales. It's a one point perspective. It's in the center of the room, it's backlit. The eye is drawn to that gorgeous light coming into the window on the right hand side slightly, casting its spell onto the left side. This one's called Dilapidated. It's an older piece of mine actually, and a bit of a mistake when I first photographed it. But the reason it worked and did well again in print sales and was shared repeatedly around the world was the fact it's got these three chairs. They're backlit with beautiful light coming in over the top of them. Never mind the fact there's actually a three point perspective off to one side. And don't even ask about the editing, by the way. Whenever I enter a space like this and this kind of light happens, it's always magical and it was no different on this occasion and I hope you've enjoyed those images. I think I see light like this maybe three times a year when I enter these spaces and you've got to try and work fast, work quick, work efficiently and capture some good results. It doesn't always work out but when it does it's great 
Earlier on in the year, for example, I captured light like this in a church in Cappadocia with one of my tour groups. They were amazed and so was I. A couple of years ago, I was over in Italy and I captured just the same kind of thing with an old boat in a farmhouse. Don't ask, I don't know why that was there, but it was. And the light coming in was spectacular. Probably a little bit too much actually, that light coming in that farmhouse and it looked a little bit fake, but also my shutter speeds were a little bit long. The key tip here is to make sure your shutter speed is fast enough to capture it so it looks like a light ray and doesn't just blur like a cloud, like a long exposure. Other than that, that's me. I hope you've enjoyed this video and until next time, make a comment if you got it and I'll see you very, very soon.